what I'm going to try to show you uh, is my story of how uh, being and seeing how little radishes grow in the desert took me some ideas to treat vascular disease in the brain and in other parts of the body. I don't know how many of you are from my age, but uh, there was a fantastic voyage movie, science fiction, science, uh, Raquel Welsh, a scientist, uh, was minified <laughs> and put into a, a, a submarine and was taken into the body, in the arterial system, in the carotid artery, okay? Not by mouth, not in the vein, but through the carotid artery. Today, we can navigate in the human brain, in the head and neck, with less than one millimeter of accuracy. We can treat diseases anywhere in that anatomy that you see there. There's a true specimen injected with a plastic material. And probably if I've done anything good in my life, is treat these babies with a vein of gallon. By the way, today, Jay showed us a book of the, I didn't know that gallon never operated, by the way. Uh, but the vein of gallon malformation is a disease where all these children died. It was practically a lethal disease. Today, we can get in to these children through the umbilical artery and go into their brains or to the femoral artery. And this is the angiogram of this baby that is dying from that big mass that is the vein of gallon aneurysmal malformation. And this malformation would congest the heart or push the brain. And interesting enough, we treat them now with a very fancy, sophisticated acrylic. All of you know this thing. We call it crazy glue. <laughs> and this crazy glue, and the truth story is that the first one, we actually got it from the hardware store. Uh, there was no FDA those days. Well, there was, but they were, they were, they were with the drugs. They were not with the, with the devices. Uh, today, you couldn't do that. And uh, this is the same angiogram. And here is a microcatheter, a very small tube uh, that is, uh, and I'll go talk a little bit uh, later about the microcatheters. This is a very high-end technology. It's less than one millimeter in size. And we navigate it. This is a x-ray where the little tube is brought all the way where the abnormality is. And this is the injection of the crazy glue to seal off the short circuit between a artery and a vein. And here is the normal angiogram. We have reconstructed the normal anatomy and got rid of this big bubble. And this kid is as much as pleasure as I can get. Uh, this kid used to die, she's five years old, and here she's a teenager. And we got over the 250 of these kids treated already. In about 70, 80% of them, we get them normal. Now, I got to go back a little bit. I got to go back to an internship in Israel in 1970. I was impressed how they had desert on one side and then green on the other. And how do they do it? Well, they use this drop by drop irrigation, where actually instead of flooding the land, you let the drops go into the root and let the root pick up the water. So when you don't have enough water, this is a great thing. By the way, we should do it all over because with the next war is not going to be oil, it's going to be water. In any event, as we go forward, I was an intern, actually a sub-intern. Uh, you know, uh, interns were, were, were the elite in those days. Uh, and I had this young patient that had a kidney infection and had an, a bacteria called Pseudomona. And that Pseudomona was only sensitive to chloramphenicol, an antibiotic. And a rare complication is a thing called a plastic anemia, where it wipes out completely the red cells of the bone marrow. And this kid died on me. My first day, my first patient, I got close. He showed me how to play bagamon, which is really a Persian game called Shesh Besh. And he died on me. I was very, very touched by that. 1972, I come to America. I'm from Mexico. And everything in America is better, or so we think. Uh, so I come to the United States, and I see a procedure called an angiogram. At that time, we used to get plastic tubing like that, cut it, shape it with steam. There were no manufacturers. They would just got Dow Corning. We can get tubing. And then we could get in from the blood vessel of the leg into the blood vessels of the body. And therefore, we could inject dye. So it dawned on me, what if, what if this kid with a kidney infection, if I can take a tube, put it in the artery, the red one, inject the medicine, pick it up from the vein, and therefore, it wouldn't go to his, to his body. Therefore, he would, maybe he would not die on me. And I said, this is what I want to do for a living. By the way, my wife didn't want me to be a surgeon because she says I'm a workaholic. 
So I said, I'll be a radiologist. In those days, radiologists didn't work very hard. So, okay, so I stayed in the hospital, and, but I did this. And this is now a high-end catheter. One of the first things that I, I developed is this uh, a catheter, which is a variable stiffness, which is the beginning or the precursor of this other tube that now we get into the brain, but this tube was made by a Frenchman. Today, this, this, the technology that exists in manufacturing catheters, micro catheters, please remember, we use the inside of these tubes to get into the brain. So they are very, very small, but they are high-end uh, manufacturing. Began us to go over to, to the materials and so on. But we also develop guide wires, little, little metals, metals uh, wires that permit us to turn to the right, to the left, and that's how we go. And we go through fluoroscopy, uh, we go in. When I got into this field, there were three major places where they were doing this. A Russian, Servinenko, but in those days, you know, it was, it was all secret. It was Russian, uh, couldn't even get in there. Uh, there was a uh, Frenchman, and there was Dr. Lusenhoff, uh, who was doing the silicone little spheres. So then we were trying to get those into a catheter, and this is me trying to put them into a catheter one by one, and it was a waste of time. It was 10 hours operation to get five little disc pellets into the brain. So um, I said, well, why don't we make a little cartridge? And that little cartridge was one of the first, but you know, we call it the NYU introducer, and it's a very simple thing, but in one injection we can put 10 little particles, or even 20 particles of that. Uh, why would you use that, or what's the value? Well, this is a drawing of a cartoon of a tumor, that if you just put a, lig a, a ligation in one feeder, the other side keeps on supplying the tumor. Whereas if we put little particles, they will go in just by the size, they will stop at the capillary level or precapillary level, and therefore dry that tumor. Well. This is a polyvinyl alcohol foam that was used in that time to put into the nose. And we cut it in little pieces and took Jose, my wife is here, you know, her blender, put it in the blender. Of course, I screw up the blender, uh, you know, but uh, we got it done. And we got these little particles and we can inject them. And I'll show you a case, a little old case of a tumor that kills children. I hope, you know, that you don't get upset. But this tumor, if you don't treat it, it consumes the red cells, the platelets. And we went ahead, and this is just a representative angiogram. All the black, stiff, black things that you see is the abnormal vessels. And after 16 hours, we dried it up. And now the kid could be operated. And the kid gets operated, the tumor could be cut. And here is the same baby after a combination of embolization, drying it up and taking it out. And there was a whole team of people that, that were able to do this. The next thing was we needed to get tubes, catheters, with more than one hole. And this is called lumens. And this was the typical double lumen catheter. John Abelith, who's not here, many of you know John from uh, that time was Medicaid, there was no Boston Scientific, was my engineer in this project. And I said, John, we gotta increase the lumen. Why don't we make, and we call it the smile. You know, the smile because liquid can go through any hole. The stupid thing is that I didn't know you could patent things. Oh. <laughs> You're young, you learn. But this is all the balloon catheters I use for that. But it's okay. Hey, he was able to do it. He went. I wanted him to do it. I didn't know that he could get money. This is the catheter. <laughs> now we had a tube that has a balloon, so we can actually change the blood flow. Not only can we go farther, because now we have coaxial, one inside the other. Now we also can stop the, or change the flow of blood. And that was already something. So now we have the ability to get there, or we start getting, but this, this map is incredible. It's a map, uh, where do I go? How do I go? How do I get there? Well, I have the great fortune to work with Pierre Lajonias, a neuroanatomist, who I did nine books with him. And this is the whole idea that the, we have holes in the bones. And those holes are the constants. If I look at each one of you, I recognize you. Different face, different tall, different this, different that. Well, actually, the blood vessels are the same. I can recognize each one of you through your vessel. You show me one angiogram, and I know what happened to you. We can predict thanks to this anatomy. And then we took those regions and created the entire functional vascular anatomy of the head and neck, base of the skull, based on these principles. Also, we needed to see. In those, those days, there were x-ray films that you had to develop, you know, the, that you had to put them through our developer. But we also had to monitor the patients. So this is a neurophysiology who worked with me, Wise Young, who developed this thing where we can monitor the spinal cord. I don't know anything about it, but he knew a lot about it. <laughs> then we came in with more sophisticated x-ray machines. And we got this fabulous machine that could turn all around the patient. 
And that already changed it because we could see things in multiple angles. But then we went, I felt this is the next prototype. And Mark asked me, you know, can you bring some new things? This is the new machine we're using. It has a hand, it has an elbow, it has a shoulder. So you can do any kind, just imagine the end numbers of projections of things that we can do. And then if we go farther, we can take angiograms and look how this is an angiogram. The patient is not moving, eh? When I started, we would move the patient's head like that, then the patient get with neck pain and all that. So that was, and then we can take that and take it and put it in a three-dimensional way so we can see depth, we can see that three-dimensional aspect. And this is actually a thing called a dual volumes, where we can fuse two and up to three volumes can be fused today. Now I'll show you what this technology put together can get us to. And this is a patient with a hole in the carotid artery. And that hole of the carotid artery is very difficult to treat. Richard, you know, one of our, our surgeons that are here know they're trying to operate this very difficult. The Russian, Servinenko, introduced the detachable balloon. And Dr. Hashima made this little balloon, which was made out of silicone, Dr. Hashima from Los Angeles. And we cooperated by making the little tube or the little catheter to make an easy detachment system. So this little balloon can be navigated in the body. And here is the same patient. This is the carotid artery. Going forward is a huge dilated vein that is popping out the eye. And here is the little balloon that is put through the hole. Actually, you parachute it, you inflate it, and the flow of blood takes it to the hole. You inflate it, and you seal off the hole. You detach it, and this is the same patient before, and this is after the treatment. No surgery, no open surgery. And I'll show you some examples of aneurysms, uh, where it's a, like an explosion. This reminds me of the golf uh, uh, thing. We sent them a, a letter that I thought we can treat it with this technique, and they didn't answer me. Later on, they said, oh, we thought about it. It doesn't work. And what it does is that this is the fantastic voyage as we go inside the body, we can go, as you see, into the aneurysm. And as we go into the aneurysm, we can put this platinum coils. This was developed by an Italian neurosurgeon, Guglielmi. And these coils can be placed inside that aneurysm, which is the smallest lesion in the human body that can kill. We also can detach them. And not only can we detach it, we can use technologies with hydrogels. Hydrogels is the same thing that you use in contact lenses, mostly water. And that was actually easy, at one point easy to get it through the FDA. Now it's not possible. But that expands and seals off the abnormality, the, the hole. And that permits us to close completely the aneurysm. So this is a patient, a real patient. That bubble on top is the aneurysm before. And this is three years after it has been plugged with the coils. We did a, a softer coil to make it and fill it up more. But I'm going to go a little forward because uh, oh, this is another thing. This is the first catheter that was made to do an angioplasty in the brain. And the idea here is to have a single lumen, and we use the guide wire to seal off the hole. So this was the cell, the first catheter uh, that was done for uh, angioplasty of the brain. And here is a little narrowing that you see the arrows in top, and in bottom after a balloon angioplasty. And this is in the early 2000s. Vascular tumors of the head and neck. We made a major impact. This child was getting blind, has a face syndrome. This is before, after three treatments, no surgery, endovascular surgery. And here is another child before a vascular malformation of the nose, bleeding, all kinds of problems. And this is after. We did a little necrosis. We had a little bit of tissue death, but then with a skin graft, we were able to repair this quite nicely. And then this is another man that you cannot operate. Uh, and with my great colleague, Dr. Milton Weiner, uh, we embolized it, and then we did surgery in stages. And we changed the life of this condition, of this patient, thanks to this technology. And now we have direct punctures, where we can actually go right into that lesion, inject a bleomycin, a chemotherapeutic agent, and actually destroy that. And for some of you that are in the cancer field, we can do a lot of things together. Uh, this is another girl with a similar lesion in the eyelid before and after this treatment. No surgery, just direct punctures of these lesions. Uh, this is a cystic lesion, a lymphatic malformation. This is before and after two treatments by endovascular means, endovascular techniques. And this is the last one I'll show you before, but here we also use surgery to reconstruct this girl. So obviously we changed the life of this child. Uh, the last thing I'll show you in my last minute is the latest thing. Is, uh, see, this is what's published as the experimental work, but now we're taking neurotechnique to the heart. 
And this is the embolic containing device. And this is an experimental animal, animal setup where we have an aneurysm in the carotid artery. And we take this device, this is the angiogram where you see the aneurysm. And here we go inside uh, the aneurysm and we open this umbrella made out of nitinol, an elastic metal. Fantastic, most stents now are made out of this material. And then we go inside, we have a little radio opacity to see, and we immediately change the flow within the aneurysm itself. And then the material can be detached. You know, we can actually inject glue uh, through this uh, 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 device. This is just dye. Uh, we're trying to control, see that things don't move. And then in the next uh, picture, you'll see the actual injection of the glue material. There's the glue material. And this is real life. And if we didn't have this thing covering the neck of the aneurysm, this glue would go right into the brain and produce a stroke. So this will also change how we treat aneurysms from an endovascular point of view. This has never been used in humans. This is still in the experimental stage. Uh, and we now have something that we can close almost any hole in the heart with the same technology. I don't know about the FDA. That's going to be another story <laughs> you know, that's going to take. And then we can detach it. I'm almost done. You can see the detachment of this uh, thing. And there is the final result. So I've taken you through the strip going from radishes in the desert to vascular disease in the body, in the, body, in the brain, in the head and neck. And uh, I want to thank, thank you for letting me share my fantastic voyage. <laughs> thank you.